Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Husky 2 battery. This battery has lithium iron phosphate chemistry in it. It's a 48 volt battery and it's 100 amp hours. And this is from a company called Big Battery. This is their RV edition. It was labeled like that on the box. They do have a golf cart battery that is pretty much the same thing, except for this has communication with inverter. And this can communicate with Victron inverters. So you can hook it up to a servo and it should communicate fine. I'm gonna try that in a future video. And these have a reputation for being rugged. They're waterproof, of course, they're outdoor rated, but they're also heated. And like I mentioned, they can go in RVs, golf carts, and that's their intended use, although you could use them for home storage too. So according to Big Battery, they went to great lengths to make sure that everything was stable inside the batteries too, which I've mentioned that in some other golf cart battery reviews, how you want everything nice and stable. It's not just about how they situate the cells and all that, but there is gonna be some movement involved. And in an RV, same situation. I did a capacity test on this and I don't get over like 96.8 amp hours. And I think they're throttling it pretty conservatively. I got sent the golf cart version of this battery first. I did three capacity tests on that. I did a single one on this one here, but it got around the same thing. So right at 96 to 96.8 amp hours is what you'll get out of these. So although it is a 100 amp hour battery, it's not gonna let you get down that low with these cells. So somewhere in that 96 amp hour range is what you're gonna get with that. And I've done similar tests on other batteries and we'll get 102, 103. And some people might kind of scoff at that and not like that. But to me, if you need that extra four amp hours and it matters that much to you, I would get an extra battery. <laughs> Uh, you don't really want to drain your cells down that low. You can drain lithium iron phosphate down to 0% and back up. And a lot of people say that, but you don't want to get down into those really, really low reaches on voltage. So I'd rather a BMS keep me just above. That's fine. I don't uh, stop everything at 20%. Now I'll go pretty far down, but I don't want to drain this thing down to 42, 40, 41 volts. Um, I want to keep it somewhere in that safe range. So this kicking off a bit early doesn't really bother me all that much. I realize for capacity tests, it looks good to get all the way down there and be able to get, you know, 103, 104, 105 for people. But yeah, this isn't going to get to that point. After all those tests, I think you might get 97 amp hours at most if you're going to be draining this. So we can pop this open here. Before I do that, I'll show you the outside of the battery, some of the features it has, and then we can take a look at what comes with the battery. Looking at the front of the battery here, this is basically where everything is at. We have the BMS on off button right there. And then we have comms port one and two. You can parallel these batteries together as well. And then the other one can go to an inverter. This does have CAN protocol on it, like I mentioned before. And then we have the negative and positive terminals. Then you can see the side of the battery here. These are the handles, but they're also meant as the mounting clips. And they, you see they, they left uh, holes here on here. So you can take these off, let's do that. And these can be flipped over. And that is meant to mount it to, if you've got an RV, or like I've mentioned, if you have the golf cart version, you can put these back in here and then that can mount it to the bed of the RV. So that's a good idea there, but that's not all. <laughs> you actually have these plates here, these are just blank plates. And the only purpose for these, they don't do anything attached to the battery like that. But if you get more than one battery, you can hook them together here. And that way, here, I'll scoot that up. That way you can connect the batteries together. And then the ones on the ends could have these clips down. So yeah, mix and match. They give different... Uh, they did give different options here. So that's nice of them to do that. That's a bit of an extra for sure. So what comes with it, these are two two gauge, 200 degrees Celsius cables, which is actually really nice. They could have gotten away with four gauge cables, but these are probably meant to parallel them together too, if you've got more than one battery. So that's a, that's a nice set of cables. And then they give these rope handles to be able to lower it in place. So you could just leave them attached if you wanted. And those are beefy for sure. And then just the terminal covers, positive and negative. All right, so I took these terminals off here, the main positive and the main negative. Both of those had terminal covers on them. And check out that BMS, man. Look at that. 
Look at this battery, holy cow. And according to Big Battery, a lot of what they went through was trying to get this to where it was completely shockproof. So in the event, again, if you are, if you have this in uh, an RV or something like that, or if it is in a golf cart, um, there's a lot of motion involved. So they want everything to be stabilized. And they've got these little, if you can see there, these little spacers in between. Ah, okay, so this isn't a board. Their wire leads are run through these little channels that you see these clips. They're not only spacers to the outside, but the wire leads are run through there. So that's good for wire management. And there's their leads going through right here. This is actually one of the heaters. So I haven't seen that before. Most of the time I see it sandwiched in between the cells. Well, that's interesting. They must have a big spacer underneath this because these cells are not that wide. So at the bottom, and I can't get this out, like this thing is completely jammed in here or glued in here, but the cells aren't that deep. So they must have a big spacer at the bottom. It looks to me like both the heating pads are on the top of the cells. I would have thought one would be underneath and the other one up top. And here's a view of the other side. So the BMS is spaced off with this plastic spacer here. And that's the second heating pad running underneath all that. And they've got this plastic shell essentially binding everything together. And they've got these metal rods helping to tension everything together. All right, and I'll focus in here on the BMS. You can see right there, it does say, I guess that's 16S at the start, and then it's 150 amp. I don't really know what BMS this is. It almost looked like a Pace BMS at first, but yeah, maybe some of you would know what it is. All right, guys, so in a future video, I am going to test, I'll just probably be a short video, but I'm going to test communication between this and a Victron servo, and I'll hook it up to a little Phoenix, one of those 48 volt Phoenix inverters. So this battery is interesting to me. It certainly wins one of the coolest looking 48 volt battery awards. Um, but other than that, it's kind of one of those items that somebody's going to specifically want it for a purpose. So it's not just a 48 volt battery storage. This is something that you're gonna have in an off-road situation, really, because there are cheaper options. These are around, well, it depends. I saw the other week, these are around 1,400. Depends on the sales, I guess. Now, it's I think the price is around 1,800 on Signature Solar's website. So these aren't the cheapest option, and I don't think they're trying to be. There's nothing wrong with that. They've got some extras in here, and they're okay with being more expensive than other brands. Actually, I've been meaning to mention that, and I'll probably mention it in some future videos, too, because I'm gonna be looking at some more high-end batteries as well. And I look at the cheaper ones also. And to a lot of people, the price is the main thing. I totally get that. But for companies like this that design batteries like this and have warranties like they do, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, they are not afraid to be a little more expensive. And I think that's actually the market needs that type of thing. First of all, these aren't made the same way as a typical rack battery. So I wouldn't, I mean, there's a lot of people that actually have rack batteries in RVs and that's fine if you're going to be on straight roads and stuff like that. But if you are going to be in a more rugged setting then I would want something that I guess more like a golf cart battery that's designed like that. And this type of battery would fit the bill for sure. It has the heaters that you'd need, but also had, is designed for shock to be moved around. Is the mounting equipment that they give with it worth it? Is that what puts it over the edge? Not really. It just kind of shows the fact that they've thought about the design more. A lot of these other golf cart batteries that I'm reviewing, they basically have the same case. They might have different screws holding the lid down, but it's the same case and they redesign what goes in that case. This was basically designed for this battery. I've actually not seen another one with this type of case and designed the way it has been. The Bluetooth app is good, gives you the info you need. It's not anything special, but are they really ever, I guess? I mean, as long as it gives me the cell voltage and gives me the state of charge, I'm fine with whatever they've got on it there. I. The color scheme doesn't really matter to me. It just needs to give me the basics. Then on to the warranty. These people have a... I go on to say here that they have a 13-year warranty when it's actually a 12-year warranty. I'm not sure how I messed that up. I could have swore I read 13, but anyway, it's a 12-year warranty. And actually, the company's been around a long while. And that's a big thing that I, was, I wanted to mention for sure. When it comes to price, it's not just the quality of the item we're looking at. It's whether or not we think they're going to warranty that item. So a lot of these batteries that we're seeing on the market, there's nothing wrong with having those low price batteries either. But some of those 
companies, do we really think they're going to be sticking around for 10 years if they warranty for 10 years or five years? I don't know. But companies like this, I don't really have a doubt. So when you have uh, a company like Big Battery, Signature Solar, they're standing behind something, that does mean something also. I'll probably get some pushback for saying stuff like that as far as pricing, warranty. Everyone seems to grouch at me when I say stuff about price, whether it's the low price items. I get, I guess I get some of the crowd saying one thing and some of the other, but most people, when I talk about price um, or if I have an item and I, one of those batteries that I reviewed recently, the shipping was a little higher and people were barking about that. I realize that that is a consideration for people. Price, I think for most people is a consideration but then also they have other things they want to tick off on their list as well. And warranty and support for most people should be on their list. But like I mentioned right towards the beginning of my final thoughts, is this battery going to be for everybody? No, I don't think so. I think most people for home storage are going to go with something cheaper that doesn't need to have all the frills and the extras. Even some of the higher end rack batteries are going to be much cheaper than this option. But is there room in the market for something like this? For sure. Yeah, I think so. All right, guys. Well, that's all for this one. I'm going to stop blabbering and feel free to leave a comment on it. And I will put a link in the description below on this battery as well. I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.